Okay, uh, hi everyone, my name is Owen, and for the last six weeks I've been working at Just Eat. So I'm sure everyone here knows how Just Eat works. Uh, you go in through the app, you make an order, and then if everything goes to plan, 30 minutes later you're sitting in front of your TV eating your food. What about when things don't go to plan? So at uh, uh, a problem Just Eat are particularly interested in is uh, undeliverable cash orders. This is when uh, an order is made online to a restaurant. The, the order is going to be paid for in cash when the driver arrives at the address. But when they get there, they find that actually nobody ordered food there or, or nobody opens the door. So this is obviously a big waste of both food and money. So what is causing these orders? Uh, here are three different people, uh, each of whom made an undeliverable order for a different reason. Uh, Alf on the left entered the wrong address and so didn't get his food. Uh, Heather got impatient waiting for her food um, and so went out to a party before it arrived. Uh, and Nigel is someone we're particularly interested in. This is a guy who likes to send big prank orders to his friends or people he doesn't like or something. Um, <laughs> so uh, the task that Just Eat set me was to uh, build an algorithm to predict these undeliverable orders regardless of what the cause was. So that's what I did. I built an algorithm that takes... Uh, data about the order, data about the, the customer, data about the restaurant, and predicts either deliverable or undeliverable. Okay, they gave me one month of data to work on. I split that in two. So the first part of the month was what we used to train the model, uh, to train our, our algorithm, and I kept the second part of the month aside to, uh, you know, for testing the performance. Now, when it came to testing the performance, things didn't go quite how I wanted, okay? So uh, this graph here shows the percentage of undeliverable, undeliverable orders that my algorithm successfully identified for each day in the month. Okay, and what we can see here is that at the beginning of the month, the, the algorithm does particularly well. We're predicting, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're accurately identifying more than 60% of the undeliverable orders on some of those days. Uh, but then all of a sudden, uh, seemingly overnight, after the 21st day of the month, the performance uh, gets a lot worse. Okay, so why has this happened? Now, this is a common problem in data science where models suddenly stop working. Uh, and typically the reason is that the, your system that you're trying to make predictions about has changed. Okay, so that's what I was interested in. I was interested in, had these customers changed their behavior since the 21st? Now, in order to think about this, what I did is I looked at the fingerprints that each of these three customers, these three hypothetical customers made in the data. So Alf and Heather, uh, they made their, their undeliverable orders accidentally, right? So I hypothesized that maybe they would have ordered a normal amount of food, they, you know, because they, they weren't intending on making a, a, a bad order. Uh, and we can also hypothesize that they probably only had one account with Just Eat. Nigel, on the other hand, he is sending 30 pizzas to his friend's house. The, uh, you know, the amount that these orders cost are, are likely to be more. Um, something else we happen to know about him is that he likes to make lots of new accounts because he thinks this is going to help him evade detection. Right, so uh, I'm now going to show you another graph that I think is quite interesting. This graph shows the average price of the undeliverable orders in blue, okay, uh, across the entire month of data, and our normal orders are in green. So the, the, the orders that got delivered, this is, the, this is their average price across the month. Uh, what's really interesting is that the, for the undeliverable orders, at the start of the month, the, the, the price is almost double what the normal orders are. And then suddenly, after 21st, you know, the moment that my model stops quite performing how it's meant to, we see a big drop in the price of undeliverable orders so that, it's, you know, that it becomes the same as a normal order. So remember I said Nigel likes to make large orders. Alf and Heather perhaps make uh, normally priced orders. Okay, well, it looks like at the start of the month we have a lot of Nigels, uh, but that some time after the, the 21st, the pranks stop, and we're left with just people like Heather and Alf. Now, this is just one graph. This is not definitive proof. Uh, if I had more time, I could show you 10 more graphs that show similar things, that after the 21st, the, uh, you know, the fingerprints of the prank orders <coughs> drop out of our data, uh, and it seems like prank orders just stopped after the 21st. So that's, that's really interesting. Right, so why, what does this mean? What this almost certainly means is there's some kind of uh, external intervention to prevent prank orders that started after 21st and was quite successful. 
what this analysis also tells us is that maybe we should be um, treating tank and accidental orders separately when training our models, okay? Because they, they leave a different fingerprint. Maybe we would be making life easier for our models, for our, for our algorithms, sorry, if we uh, separated the two cases out. Um, the other thing I would like to emphasize is that the model I trained, sorry, the, the algorithm I created was actually quite good. At least it was, it was good at catching prank orders uh, and the performance dropped when the prank orders just disappeared. So that's, that's the line I'm taking. Um, <laughs> so the final thing I should say is if you really want to improve this model um, for, for, for orders that came after the 21st, you need to collect more data from after the 21st and retrain the model on that data. That's everything I've got to say. Thank you very much. Thank you.